January 6th committee hearings are happening. One of the undercovered elements of all of this is what exactly was the role of police informants, FBI, and others in the actual riot at the Capitol? Now, we are no way saying that they are the ones who are fully responsible for it. Obviously, Trump is the one who started Stop the Steal and that. But we do know that there were informants that were there, and there's been a longstanding question as to what the level of involvement was, how much did they know. If they did know and they had so many informants, why did it happen in the first place? These are all fantastic questions. You don't have to be a conspiracy theorist in order to ask these. One of the individuals has come under scrutiny is a guy named Ray Epps, and he was a protester who was there. The reason why is because there's video that has been come out and edited together, which shows him repeatedly on the night of January 5th and then on the morning of January 6th saying, we need to go into the Capitol. We need to go into the Capitol. And fellow protesters were so suspicious of him that they are actually chanting the word fed at him. So let's take a listen to this video just so you guys get an idea of who this person is. Tomorrow, we need to go into the Capitol. Into the Capitol. What? No! Tomorrow? I don't even like to say it because I'll be arrested. Well, let's not say it. We need, we need to go. I'll say it. All right. We need to go in. Shut the fuck up, Boomer. To the Capitol. Base fed posting? (laughs) (laughs) We need to go into the Capitol. I didn't see that coming. (laughs) Okay. All right, no, Dave, but one more thing. Yeah, so can we go up there? No? When we go in. Are we going to get arrested if we go up there? Yeah. You don't need to get shot. arrest us all? Now, it's been a while since January 6th, and Mr. Apps has actually basically been missing for a long time. Well, the New York Times somehow found him at a quote-unquote seat relocation and interviewed him. So let's put this up there on the screen. Now, this is very interesting because they portray a sympathetic figure of Ray Epps. He had to sell his business. I'm sure that you know people have been trying to—and you know, I don't condone any harassment of this guy, any of this stuff. But what's fascinating to me are a couple of things, Crystal. Number one— Epps acknowledges, actually, that he contacted the FBI, quote, minutes after discovering that agents wanted to talk to him. At no point in this entire article and interview did the FBI ever ask him, hey, so did you ever have any affiliation in any way with the FBI whatsoever? They also acknowledge in the article that Ray Epps has not been charged by the FBI, despite admitting to breaching the barriers of the Capitol. Now, he says, and there is no video evidence to claim, that he ever entered the building. He claims now, though, a very different tone. Now, Ray Epps says he may sue Dominion, or he may, like, join lawsuits against Stop the Steal people. He now says disinformation is like a scourge. He's reciting quite a few kind of liberal talking points uh, that would be very amenable to CNN and to elsewhere, and seems to have completely abandoned his entire like MAGA outlook to the point where he was encouraging people to breach it. Maybe it's genuine. Yeah. I don't know. Well, but it's very odd. There were two things that stood out yeah. to me about the article is, first of all, um, have there been any other sympathetic portrayals of anyone who was oh, at the Capitol? Yeah, yeah. That's a fantastic the, point. I, yeah, yeah, that's I, I, excellent Maybe, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I haven't seen them. And this is a, this is a very sympathetic yeah. portrayal. And I am always in favor of, you know, people are complex. They make mistakes. They feel one way one day. Totally. Another day they get hyped up. They say stupid shit. They do stupid shit. Like, I am in favor of 
foregrounding the complexity of human beings, so I don't have an issue with that. But I do think it's interesting that Mm -hmm. this is the one character that they decide to take that approach to and have, you know, this very sympathetic portrayal and really kind of whitewash the um, extent of his involvement. Because as you just show in that video, the way they portray in this article, if you just read this, he may have said to one person the night before, like, oh, we should go into the Capitol, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Not over and over and over and over and over again to the point that the people around him are like, this seems like a setup, are you a Fed? Yes. Um, He also talks about how he has regrets. This is the quote from the piece. Epps also said he regretted sending a text to his nephew well after the violence had already erupted in which he discussed how he helped to orchestrate the movements of people who were leaving Mr. Trump's speech near the White House by pointing them in the direction of the Capitol. So again, That's very different than the uh, rest of the portrayal of him in this piece, which is very like, oh, he just happened to be there. And actually they say, oh, he was trying to prevent protesters from engaging with law enforcement. And they they paint him out as like, you know, a sort of like attempted hero of the situation is is the portrayal that, you know, that they go with here. So I I thought that was I thought that was very um, I thought it was noteworthy, I guess, just that this is the individual that they decide to give the really favorable portrayal to. It also pissed me off that they say the baseless idea that the FBI was behind the attack on the Capitol. Now, look, maybe Tucker has said that. Never heard that here. Yeah. Uh, you never heard that from a lot of people, Glenn Greenwald and others, who are asking what the hell happened on the day. It's not a baseless idea to say the fact that there were police informants who were there on January 6th. We literally know that from court filings. Well, we yeah. know it from New York Times. Was the, yes. They did the reporting. <laughs> say, as, are yeah. they conspiracy right. mongers now who are saying this is a false flag? They are, exactly. one, they are the outlet that first acknowledged that there were people in contact with the FBI yeah. who were there inside the Capitol. So again, I have no idea who this man is, what he thought he was doing in that day, what he really was doing on the day, or any of that. But I think the total lack of curiosity about that piece and the attempt to straw man and dismiss anyone who would say, hey, you know, it would have been great if this was all disrupted and prevented, which is what the FBI is supposed to be mm-hmm. involved with. So if there was connectivity with some of these participants on the ground, which it would be strange, it would be unusual if there wasn't, because we know they've infiltrated groups like the Oath Keepers, then why why weren't you able to see this coming? Why weren't you able to disrupt it? I think those are extremely legitimate questions that you're basically not allowed to ask or your conspiracy. And theories. here, let me ask you this. Why is a QAnon, by the way, I have no sympathy for the QAnon shaman. He looks like a total loser. But yeah. why does a QAnon shaman have, get 41 months in prison and prosecuted by the FBI? And then the guy who on the night of January 5th and all throughout January 6th is repeatedly asking people and admittedly sending text messages about orchestrating yeah. people, why has he never been charged by the FBI? They even acknowledge in the piece, the FBI has never stated why they decided not, not to, to prosecute him. Mm-hmm. There is clearly you could go after someone. Um, look at the number of people that have been prosecuted on this. And again, I have no sympathy for many of these people. They broke the law, fine, you should be prosecuted to the full extent of it. But when you point, and then it should be equal application. And that's the issue. Sure, I'm glad, you know, the Proud Boys, Oath Keepers, all of that. Although I do think they're going to have a very, very hard time proving the sedition case against the Oath Keepers in the way that just based on U.S. case law and all of that. And they've probably been better off just focusing on pure just uh, riot, you know, conspiracy to riot or whatever. On Epps, I mean, he's never once set foot in the jail time. And he also says that he contacted the FBI, quote, minutes within this is happening. And none of us are even claiming that this guy even works for the FBI. Maybe he was an informant. Maybe, you know, who knows uh, what the level of involvement exactly so was. This was one of the pieces that was always a little eyebrow raising is he had appeared on a FBI list of people yes, they were looking for in off. connection with January 6th. And he was up there one day and then the next day he's taken off. Yeah. His explanation for it in this piece is, oh, it's because the minute that I heard this, I contacted right. the FBI. Hard to say why that would lead them to being like, you know, like immediately. So why wouldn't they just prosecute? Right. Or so, did you enter a plea agreement? No, so, because we would know that. So the explanation yeah. that's given here is that because he didn't breach the Capitol, according to him, and again, yeah, again there is in video evidence, but <laughs> yeah. according to him, he didn't actually breach the Capitol. But there were a lot of people who technically trespassed and breached the barricades who weren't charged. That's okay. what that's what they ultimately say. So 
that's what we know. Um, and uh, this is a, a little coda to the Ray Epps story. Still yeah, a lot so of questions here. I, I still have a say. hell of a lot of questions. I think the Times did a terrible job. I think they should have just asked him straight up, were you ever fed? Did you ever work with feds? Did you ever work in any capacity? There's no yes or no answers in any of this. <laughs> Look, if the answer is no, great. Um, get confirmation from the FBI. We can all move on. I mean, I think it was a legitimate question from the get-go. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.